I got to play Teardown. The version I played has a tutorial and two full maps which can be played in either sandbox or challenge mode. The campaign was not available, and what is here may or may not be in the final game and is still all a work in progress. I tend to skip tutorials, but with this game I felt I kind of needed it. It's a series of invincible, dev textured rooms to teach you how to move, to interact with items and eventually how to destroy them. First impressions are all important, and my first one was, ooh it's really round which is probably the last thing you'd imagine in a game full of blocky voxels. But because it uses ray tracing, it's not constrained by the same limitations as standard games are, so this sort of projection is likely more accurate, but coming from other games it feels weird and can be disabled in the options, which I did for this video, so we can all focus on the game rather than the barrel lens effect that's being used to represent it. Also, it's using Denesis's own implementation of ray tracing, so you won't require a GeForce RTX card to run it, but you'll still want some powerful hardware. He recommends a quad-core processor and a GeForce 1070, but for solid 60fps gameplay at 1080p you'll want a GeForce 1080 or a Radeon 5600 or faster. Eventually you're let out into the wilderness and are given the simple task of crossing this river. Which took me far longer than I care to admit because I got carried away, breaking into a nearby building and setting fire to it all. The Daily Mail is going to have a field day with this one. And then I couldn't find a boat because it got lodged under a tree I'd cut down. The first proper impression I had with this game was, this destruction feels meaty. And that's good. Smacking something and watching it fall apart and seeing all those loose bits tumble to the ground feels as satisfying as it should, and it doesn't get old quickly. The trees are the most immediately gratifying thing to smack, since they can be felled in one well placed hit and bundles of leaves tumble off them and branches snap as they should if they hit the ground with enough force. Even in the time trial segments of this game, I couldn't help but go out of my way to give one of these a good thump at every chance I could. I eventually got over the river and completed the level, perhaps not in the way I should have done, but in a way that's good practice for the game to come, which is all about completing objectives in ways you're not supposed to. With the tutorial over, I moved on to the sandbox. There were two levels in the demo that I played, but one of them was locked until I'd earned a total of 12 points from the challenge mode of the first one. But let's be honest here, the first thing everybody's going to do in this game is to jump into the sandbox and to try and destroy the entire map. So it's worth pointing out the limits here. You can't burrow down into the ground, it seems like most of the level is sat on a thin layer of ground with an invincible layer of bedrock beneath, which is fair enough. The levels themselves are contained within a square arena. As you approach the sides, you'll see a sign appear highlighting where the edges are. But aside from that, nothing's off limits, and everything can break and collapse if hit with the right tools. The whole world isn't physically simulated at all times. A building will not collapse until the last connecting voxel to it is destroyed. In an earlier interview, Dennis explained that this was done to make the consequences of the player's actions predictable. You won't accidentally collapse a building when you hit the wrong support. You can instead leave one strand connected to be destroyed as and when you need the building to collapse, and so on. But once things have collapsed, they'll physically move and crumble as you'd expect them to from then on. It does what you'd hope it would. And smaller structures like this wooden one here do move, break and twist in real time as you shoot chunks out of them. And so will the pipes around the level. The soft, rubbery connections between the objects isn't something that's really been seen until teardown. And as you can imagine, it is satisfying to watch these things bend and break as you put them under pressure. When it comes to dealing out destruction, you have a number of tools at your disposal. Your sledgehammer can smash wooden things nicely, and some other surfaces as well. But tougher buildings and materials require you to shoot them with guns, to attack them with blowtorches, or to blow them up with explosives. The bombs are the most fun, and result in a sizeable explosion. Then there are the pipe bombs, which I wouldn't trust as far as I can throw them since you don't know where they're going to end up detonating. You'll find these sorts of items dotted around the level, but they do appear finite in number and have limited ammunition, so this does restrict the amount of destruction you can deal in a single playthrough, but not by much. And then there are the vehicles, and these are extremely effective for destroying stuff. I did enjoy plowing them through buildings, and honestly, when it comes to time trials, the sky's the limit with these things. I can imagine people constructing ramps to launch vehicles off, at which point even the sky isn't the limit anymore. The only thing to look out for is the debris, which will slow the vehicles to a crawl and may even jam them in place. So enter buildings and cars at your own risk. Having dabbled with everything for just a few hours, the possibilities at the moment seem almost endless. And the other really impressive effect is the fire and the smoke it produces. 
I could talk about it, but instead I'll just set fire to these benches and we'll let this whole structure gradually collapse as the fire spreads and as the smoke billows out from every opening. It truly feels like a next gen effect and is something I don't think you'll ever really tire of seeing. And while it doesn't matter in the sandbox game mode, in the challenges if a fire gets too big it'll trigger the alarm, which is why you'll find your fire extinguisher so handy. But even without fires it's fun to spray it all over the level to watch it dribble down walls and to ooze out of holes. You have a health bar but it's forgiving and regenerates very quickly. You can only really die if you stand in a fire for a long period of time or if you get caught in a tight space with lots of explosions going off around you, which I'll admit happened to me a few times. I think that health isn't there to be a challenge but more simply to disincentivize repeated reckless behaviour, but you can still get away with a lot. It is fun to destroy stuff, but I'm also pleased there are challenges which allow you to apply your tools to a more focused cause. In this demo there were two challenges per level, each available in four difficulties. As you go up the difficulty levels you need to complete more objectives and you have fewer items at your disposal. These challenges were all different, I had the keycard one where you have to physically press a button at each objective and then to reach a getaway vehicle in a set amount of time. Propane was kind of the same, only the objectives had to be shot, meaning that I didn't necessarily have to be there in person to trigger them. In fact since they explode it's perhaps better not to be. Computers was exactly like keycards as well, only with computers. So most of these levels I played did play relatively similarly, but how much fun were they? You might think that running from point to point would be boring, but I actually found it overwhelming. I couldn't remember where all those points were, so I'd find myself frequently checking the map as the time was ticking down, which you most definitely don't want to be doing. The game definitely rewards replaying and mastering a level. I feel like you'll have to play some of these levels dozens of times before you feel comfortable with a set route. You're free to quick save and to quick load whenever you like during the planning stage, which helps massively by avoiding the frustration of making a mistake and having to restart the whole process again. Some of the objectives require quite a lot of preparation, and when that timer starts counting down, it's intense. The music doesn't help matters, it's the most anxiety inducing track I've ever heard. Clock ticking, lights flashing everywhere, the only way it could be more tense is if there were enemies hunting you down. And the last game mode I played was Chopper, where you must reach objectives with an attack helicopter hunting you down, firing bullets at you and launching the occasional missile, which destroys the level as much as you'd expect it to. In a way this is less scary because you have as much time as you'd like to finish it, but you do have a murderous helicopter hunting you down so there are pros and cons, but at least you can see where it is at all times through walls, and brilliantly it doesn't instantly know where you are. If you creep out of a place without being seen, the helicopter will remain hovering there for a while, looking for you, so I actually found this game mode to be quite different from the others, and a refreshing break from the time trial game mode, and it makes me excited to see what other challenges will be thought of for the final game. The current ones work extremely well with the game's destruction and I frequently alternated between thinking the challenge was too easy before realising that it was more complicated than I had anticipated, and then wondering how the hell I was meant to complete it, and then eventually when I figure it out I feel I'm too overpowered again. I quickly became familiar with the controls and basic gameplay mechanics, but I can see there's a huge amount of depth and complexity when it comes to mastering these challenges. You'll be able to beat them on easy settings without much thought, but the harder ones will really get you thinking. I know already that this game is going to develop a dedicated, hardcore speedrunning community. So thanks to Dennis for giving me a preview, and if you have anything you'd like me to show more of then just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Just remember that this is an early preview and doesn't represent what the final thing will be like. 